All right, welcome back. Look who look who I found. It's uh, my co-host and uh, my buddy Vito Fasella, former congressman from Staten Island. We're uh, together every Sunday morning here in New York on AM 970. The answer on Table Talk. And yesterday we had rave reviews from our show. I'm still getting calls about, hey, I hadn't heard that, seen that. People are really eating that up. Um, That's great. It's good to be with you, Joe. So, Vito, um, you know, you've been around. You know what's happening. I value your advice. You know, our editor and, you know, our local television personalities are kind of beating up on us that these guys here are making a mockery of Staten Island. And I've been showing the audience these hundreds of letters from, yeah, all over the country that sure. are coming in. Um, but, yeah, uh, one, one – uh, we, uh, we got something very important to talk about. But, you know, just today – um, one came in, and you, I want to read you this, because this should give you a sense of how regular human beings are connecting. This came in today. Dear sirs, I am 70 years old and retired. I live on Social Security and a small pension. It isn't much. I wish I could send you all $2,000, but I want you to know that I support you all and admire your courage. To keep, please keep standing. God bless you all. Your friend. Chaz Bud Norton um, from Adirondack, New York. And here's a guy on a Social Security and a tiny pension. And he took time out of his day to write a beautiful letter to the guys and actually sent in 20 bucks, a check for $20. Way so, to go, bud. Isn't it? I mean, doesn't it kind of contrast to what they're saying about us and what the rest of the country feels? I, I think there's a, gro a, a big slice of America. And this gentleman, Bud Norton from upstate New York and Adirondacks probably feels that, well, many feel, uh, is that the rules and the businesses are arbitrary, which really was what triggered this whole issue, was not just flouting uh, or becoming irresponsible or reckless. It was the rules as applied are, are just not good, and you're destroying people's lives. And those individuals, particularly small business owners, because we know the big businesses have voices, have advocates, have lobbyists, and that's fine. That's America. But it's a small business owner who has no place to go, no place to turn, and no voice uh, to really become his or hers that are feeling so frustrated and downtrodden. And I think a lot of people across America can relate to it. And what better way than to, see, to send the support by, by writing or standing united? Listen, I get it. There are some people who don't. Uh, appreciate it, don't respect it. That's America too. Uh, but where is the help and assistance for the small business owner who is now perhaps out of a job and not collecting a paycheck? No, it's crazy. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to sit here. I see the guys opening the mail and I, I like reading them. And, you know, there have been a couple saying you guys are stupid and everything else. Of course, there's always going to be some, you know, contra opinion. It's another great thing about America that all voices are supposed to be heard. Uh, but, Vito, right here locally, I was uh, – last week, uh, I went and got a rapid test, a rapid COVID test. I went to a local pharmacy where they're giving them out because I've been in contact with people here and there. Um, and I got a rapid test. I was negative, thank God. Um, and it was like 150 bucks, right? And I was thinking in my head, like, wow, how much money are they making off this thing? Um, but I was also thinking as a capitalist that at some point these – Costs are going to start dropping because more people are going to do it. The access will be there. Um, you just told me about a place here in New York, and I'm sure that in Staten Island, I'm sure around New York and other places where you can actually now go to a drive up place mm -hmm. and get it for like 75 bucks. Right. So there's actually a place that's set up in, in like ingenu <laughs> ingenious what they did. They, they converted old containers and it becomes like a portable, if you will, but stationary uh, medical office. It's situated or located over by the Charleston area of Staten Island. If, for those familiar with the South Shore of Staten Island, it's by the Target and Home Depot. And there's a brand new Regal Cinema uh, movie hey. theater. You talk about a, a travesty, brand new theater that I think opened last December, shut down in March. Imagine one, that. One more casualty. But I guess what happened, because that parking lot is unused or has been unused, these folks set up a... a like a COVID-19 testing facility, instead of standing on the street corner or standing on the sidewalk for an hour or two hours, you can drive up, sit in your car, daylight like today, pouring rain, 
expecting snow in the next few days. So if you're looking for an alternative, get a COVID test where you can sit in the car with your radio going, read a book, the heat, you can shoot over to the Regal Cinemas over in Charleston. And, um, and you're right. So you can get two types of tests, the PCR and the rapid test is 75 bucks. Wow. So the price is, you know, the free market system is working, it mm-hmm. seems, right? When everybody wanted it, you got the free tests at some place. So you got lines around the corner. And if you don't want to wait in line and you can go to a place where there's 100 other people who may be sick, you sit in your car and go for a rapid. Um, they were 150 in just a couple of weeks. Now they're 75. Yeah, is it busy there? Are they like, yeah, is it like yeah. an hour wait? No, they're, or? They're, they're, it's actually their people. It's, I think it's a steady flow. It's relatively new. It's only open within the last, open its doors within the last week. So I guess everybody's getting their legs going, but there have been people there, 50, 60, I don't even know on a, on a daily basis. But the important thing is this weather gets compromised and gets colder and raining and snow. Rather than me standing outside, to me, I think the, the big value here is you get to sit in your car. Uh, with the no, I like it. I did it a couple of weeks ago. Um, my buddy Frank Morano just uh, recently got one, so he's safe. Maybe we'll get him down here for the other side of midnight. Um, have you been tested? I have. I yeah. have. A few How weeks ago, uh, again, our daughter, daughter was thought to be exposed, so just to be precaution, I'm negative. Negative. Well, that's uh, not a new development. Yeah, it's a been big negative, negative for his whole life. <laughs> that was a layup. That was a layup. I thought these were all Dear John letters. <laughs> yeah. it ain't these are all the girls I've been trying to date yeah. for the last few years. John, no these thank are all you. The no, no thank you. you. Get we, lost. You're a turn, creep. We You're turn a creep. to sender. We turn to sender. We turn to sender. <laughs> In any event, so we waited online. It was about a four hour or, you know, four hour situation from start to finish online for about two hours. People were pleasant, but what are you going to do? Uh, and just as a precautionary note, which a lot of people are doing, I think, uh, we we got tested. We all came back negative. So fortunately, good. we're good. Well, as of now, we're uh, you and I are a positive because we're a double negative. Exactly. Well, two <laughs> negatives. Make positive, That's right? what I'm saying. We got Very two good. negatives. You got something from the uh, Farrell Math. Class. I good. remember <laughs> my ninth grade math, don't I? <laughs> Big shout out to my buddy Rich Christie out there in the uh, in the stagehand Teamsters Union. They're still working every single day. He's tuned in with all the boys on a set somewhere in What's New up, York. Rich? But uh, Rich, thank you very much for always tuning in. I want to thank you all for tuning in. And uh, little by little, over the next week, I'm going to start building out more programming. Um, to the point where I hopefully have 12 hours a day of programming, not just me, but some of the great voices you hear on my show. So stay tuned. I may go live later if we have any breaking news. But uh, until tomorrow, I'll see you. Same bat time, same bat channel, more liquid lunch.